I've never been fond of Commando, or Senjo no Kami. It just never felt very good to me as a run and gun. Playing it this time, I think I worked out why. The Famicom version is a technical disaster. A quick peek at the US version made me think that those problems carried over there too. This is the first time that Capcom produced a Famicom port of one of their games in-house, and after the disasters of Micronics, you'd think that this would be less flickery and glitchy. But no, if anything, the flicker seems to have dramatically increased. The Japanese title means Wolf of the Battlefield, and the original arcade game was quite a hit for Capcom. The title is supposed to reflect how the Commando Super Joe is a lone wolf, taking on an entire army by himself. It's another case where the heroic military in a Japanese game is clearly American, and the villains are vaguely Nazi Germany. Super Joe has to shoot his way through four stages of them to reach the enemy base and blow it up. Then the game loops, and if you loop four times, you get an ending. The B button fires, and it can shoot pretty quick if you use a rapid-fire controller. The A button throws out a grenade, and grenades in this game have a special property. They can reveal secret bonus areas, or they can turn enemies into items that you can collect for extra points. These boxes you can pick up are extra grenades, and almost everything else you collect are just extra points. A notable exception is this flashing grenade, which makes your next grenade destroy everything on the screen. Along the way, you'll want to keep an eye out for POWs. Rescuing them is worth points, but also they're worth bonus points after you clear a section. And saving all of them is worth a pretty big bonus. One of the things that gave me trouble playing is how Super Joe doesn't really fire at angles. Pushing in an angled direction and hitting fire it turns it more of a half step away from the direction you are already moving. You have to keep moving and firing in order to get fully rotated. But that's only for the angles. If you turn 90 or 180 degrees, you're fine. Having inconsistent controls with the way that enemies are constantly flooding you makes it difficult to avoid getting run down sometimes. That non-stop swarm of enemies is one of Senjo no Okami's biggest flaws. There's so many individual enemies on the screen at any given moment that there's non-stop flickering. And worse, when the game tries to spawn in a new enemy and there's too many on the screen, it just despawns them. It's annoying in regular play, but I've had the enemies that are worth a lot of points just suddenly vanish. And that leads to the non-stop graphical glitches. The way the game loads in its graphics all the time, making the screen flash with weird characters, just looks terrible. There really isn't too much to Senjo no Okami. It's a very basic game where your only goal is really to score points. I don't even think the continue option matters that much, since it is very much a score attack game. Probably the best thing in this game is the soundtrack. The music is really well done, though quality music is definitely something we've already come to expect from Capcom. We're going to encounter Super Joe one more time before we're through, and once more he's going to be fighting Nazis. When it comes to Senjo no Okami, though, it's a weak port of a game that I already wasn't fond of. If it had been a good port, I probably still would have been, oh, it's fine, but it hurts my eyes to play this version and the controls are just frustrating. I'm not really sure that this is an improvement over what Micronics was producing for Capcom.